Thank you to Dice Dreams for sponsoring this video. Dice Dreams is a free and fun game available on Android and iOS so everyone can get in on the action. Building up your kingdom is quick and easy with intuitive fast-paced gameplay, but so is my favorite part of the game, the dice rolls! With a name like Dice Dreams, you know it's gonna be in there, but rolling the dice earns you everything from coins, bonuses, and even defense shields for when your friends attack your kingdom. Don't worry, you can get revenge on the attackers later, but but for now, use my link in the description to download Dice Dreams. Any new players who use my link are going to get a bonus of 200 dice rolls and 1 million coins on your third day of play. Give it a try, it helps support the channel, and you're also gonna have fun blowing off steam on whatever new device you got for the holidays. Hey neighbor, welcome back to ARTV. My name is John, and it's time for a look back at my picks for the top 20 best hits of 2021. Now, I think the definition of hit song has continued to evolve and shift in the streaming era. A hit song can pass us by very quickly, and while I think it's an achievement to have something even touch the Billboard Hot 100, everything on this list has to have charted for at least five weeks, and that's really the only requirement. Everything on the list is the original version of the song, not a remix, unless I note otherwise. So with all of that in mind, I hope you enjoy my picks for the best hit songs of the year. Keep in mind, it'll probably look a little bit different than yours. And let's get started at number 20. Call of My Phone was a track I didn't expect to enjoy as much as I did. It's Lil TJ featuring Black. It's a vengeful take on heartache, but at the same time, it has kind of a chilled out atmospheric edge thanks to the crooning of Black on the hook and, and other aspects of the song. It's haunting, but it's confrontational as Lil TJ tries to make sense of whatever situation he's landed in. Because I'm on my knees when I'm begging, because I don't want to lose you. The Italian rock band Monoskin had one hell of a year. They won the literal frickin' Eurovision Song Contest, but not only that, they got acclaim and praise from so many other celebrities, and even if it is kind of this glammed out, mainstreamified version of rock. If rock is on the charts, you know obligatory placement from John from ARTV. Now you might think it's strange that I have it down so low on the list, but that has more to do with the song choice than it does with the band itself, because I really do enjoy Monoskin from what I've heard. I truly hope that this is kind of the floodgates opening to other stuff in their discography, and that they're able to maybe round themselves out a bit more and add some extra texture and dynamic because Beggin is rough around the edges. I enjoy this song for what it is, but it can get old fast. And I'm sure if you heard this a million times on TikTok, then you don't want to hear me talk about this for a second longer. There's an earnest grit to what the country artist Eric Church typically delivers, and I really appreciate the warmth, the grit, and sincerity of his single Hell of a View that became one of his biggest hits in a long time, and also one of his best. This is a song that managed to be a mainstay country hit that also crossed over to the Billboard Hot 100, putting him well into the top 40. This song hung around, it had a longevity to it, and I'd like to think that a lot of that has to do with its message. The best song on positions, hands down, is POV, and I don't want to hear a single argument, okay? Throw your punches later, but let me have just a moment to appreciate the gentle string section that really helps in aiding this song, taking it to the next level. It's interesting as Ariana tries to shift perspectives as she kind of ponders the point of view of her partner, like when somebody maybe tells you, I wish you could see yourself the way that I see you. Ariana flat out kills the vocals on this. I would have liked to have seen her unleash and maybe do a few extra runs like she shows off on this song. It's one of the things that attracted me to her music and her artistry in the first place, and I just feel like the album itself positions underutilized that. Ava 
Ava Max coming through with another delectable club banger. This is the kind of poptimism that I love to see. It's not exactly the most thought-provoking stuff out there, but pop isn't always meant to be that. There's artful pop, and then there's also stuff that can have meaning to it, but is just flat out fun to listen to. The chomping synth-heavy beat screams out summer heat, play this at a tropical paradise, or maybe locked away in your very hot home. Producers out there, please take notes, because you need to stop shying away from just pulling the dynamite switch and ramping up the BPM because it can result in some really focused bangers like my head and my heart. My Boy is a fantastic misty-eyed country breakthrough hit that I didn't expect to happen in the year 2021, but it did and I'm so thankful for its existence. It's a man talking to his son and saying, I love you even though by blood you are just my stepson, you are truly my son. Three out of the four songwriters on this track were step parents, and that really makes the message feel more genuine to me. It's not just a country singer spouting off about something that doesn't hit home for them. It's wistful musings turned to loud expressions of love. Just a proud papa out here loving his son, getting misty-eyed whenever the son calls him dad for the first time, is telling him that he loves him. It's just very heartwarming. You want to give somebody a hug after listening. Not a man, you should cut it off. Get your passport, cause we run it off. You can sit and talk. You can tell me everything that's on your chest, baby. Get it off. Interesting that this was the longest charting song from Call Me If You Get Lost. In fact, it just barely hit five weeks on the Hot 100. But I'm gonna take what I can get, even though it's not my top favorite. It's barely two minutes long. Tyler, the creator and company, still managed to pack a lot in. Oh, uh, you look malnourished has to be the best opening line that I heard in a song all 2021 long. It's just so bold and forward, but also kind of wonky and out of place, but it works. I think What's Your Name works a lot better in the flow and the context of the album, but I still really appreciate the soulful, breezy rap that has the swagger of a true charmer, not just some pickup artist that's out here on the streets. We've actually got a collective of dudes that are out here putting it on the line, but they have the moves to back it up. Her piano, but she doesn't know that I was the one who taught you Billy Joe. It's a different girl now, but there's nothing new. I know you can change your mood. I know this might seem weird considering I had gripes with this track at first because I criticized Deja Vu for sounding like a Lord song. But it does sound like a Lord song, more so than anything that Lord gave us in the year 2021, so perhaps I've reconsidered. Deja Vu really does sound like it could have a home on pure heroin or perhaps some sort of extended version that picks up where the last one went off, but this is a grower. It got more plays from me than driver's license or even good for you. When that ricocheting synth peaks perfectly with the crescendo of the drum loop about 90 seconds into the song, that's when they got the hooks in. That is where they just did the pile driver right into me. The Billy Joel references, the dramatization of the entire relationship as it plays out on a silver screen before the entire world's eyes. It's a song that was made to be knocked out of the park by somebody who has a background in acting, and that's exactly what Olivia brings to the table, because we told you this was melodrama. I'm wondering why do all the come out at night? Monsters came out in 2020, but it broke the charts in 2021, and I'm just happy to see that All Time Low with an album as great as Wake Up Sunshine actually got some recognition. I didn't think this song was going to be very good the first time I heard it, because I'm not a Black Bear fan, not in the slightest. But I have to say, this is one of the best guest verses he's ever delivered, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that he shipped it prime, meaning we got some very fast shipping. His guest verse doesn't overstay its welcome, and I love that All Time Low are the mainstays on this track. Alex Gaskarth holds it down with kind of this bitter sensation that rolls off the tongue. This is the original version of the track, as it was made for the album itself, and I love this song still to this day, no matter how many times I have heard it. Half of us laying waste our youth is in the present.
So confident, so smooth, so soulful, but also so optimistic. It's Good Days by SZA. This is a hell of a tune that really just lived rent free in my head all year long. It got a lot of plays because of the fact that it's uplifting and I love SZA's voice. It really just feels like a bubbling creek that you're just watching on a peaceful fall day or maybe the winter, the changing of the seasons. You think back to the best times of your life, which is definitely the intention of the song. Well, 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 Bieber's R&B dreams and his demand to be taken seriously finally actually happened because Peaches is a certified bop any way you frame it. This is a song that features Daniel, Caesar, and Gibeon. We'll talk more about Gibeon in just a moment as we continue on the list. But for now, Peaches deserves the credit it gets because this is a hit song that absolutely had tenacity behind it. The chorus of this song might get overbearing if you sit down and play it on a loop, but I feel like Bieber really shines here. I love the fact that it's effortlessly catchy, it's a smoothed out transition to the guest features on the track, but it always comes back to Justin, just having this bouncy allure to his vocals. His personality is actually able to shine here. It's not drowned out or lost in the production. Instead, it's a top-down, cruise with the friends type of jam. This is yet another direct hit from Taylor Swift. This was the chart topper from her album Evermore that dropped in December 2020. This is a song that really features a distinctive guitar pattern, and I love how that's able to kind of nurture the other elements of the track, namely that kind of chiming, twinkling piano. It's an overflowing confession of love, and it's just really, really cute and sweet and bubbly and warm and all that fun shit. Aces on the production all around. I love what Aaron Desner of the national fame was able to do with this track. As somebody who's not even a fan of Glass Animals, I have to admit that I am very happy that Heat Waves was the song that blew up from Dreamland and finally got them some attention. Just because I don't necessarily like them doesn't mean I don't think they deserve a time in the spotlight. Heat Waves continues to impress me with its longevity beyond the meme, beyond the trend. This is a song that is hitting on an emotional level with people. And despite the fact that it has that, it's also an extreme earworm. I mean, you will never rinse this thing from your ears, but so far it has a bit of problem. Dave Bailey, the front man of Glass Animals, typically writes from other perspectives and sometimes just kind of gives us off the wall musings that don't really make sense because they're not meant to. This is an album that for him was much more personal, so I appreciate that aspect and I hope that he and the band continue to do more like this in the future. Save those tears, save, save them for another day because in number seven, we have yet another song from The Weeknd's album, After Hours. This time, it's Save Your Tears, whether it be the original version or the remix assisted by Ariana Grande. Absolutely, this is another 80s synth pop leaning tune, but the hooks in this track, his vocal melodies, the inflections on the words, the way that he delivers and packages everything so well, this is what makes The Weeknd The Weeknd, his ability to just flip that switch and go from just in your face to a bit more emotionally confrontive. Not to be dramatic, but I wanna die. This bitch got me paying on rent, paying for trips. First they left the door open, then they skated their way over, but what got my heart more than anything else was the idea of Anderson Pack and Bruno Mars smoking out the window. This bitch got me putting it all the way in number six because the dynamic between these two, it's an unsettling type of chemistry because the magic is all over the air. This is a timeless tune that absolutely has 70s Motown and soul inflections behind it, and if something like this can continue to have a presence on the charts, we know that we are actually going to survive the next couple of years. I get like this every time. On these days, I feel like you be I began the first
Yeah, I would say that I believe in love at first sight, because Gibeon, with Heartbreak Anniversary, was living proof of that. That was my introduction to his music, outside of a guest feature on a Drake song that I had heard and not really cared about beyond Gibeon's portion of that track. Heartbreak Anniversary is just so sultry, so soulful. There's so much here that shows off his dynamic and dynamite vocal range, but it also has this glowing heart that definitely grew two sizes that day. A classic R&B resurgence in the 2020s is absolutely welcome. I'm putting the mat right out in front of my channel because I want them to walk right on in. Heartbreak Anniversary might be a bit of an older song, but he's proved even with his newer stuff too that he absolutely has the chops, the talent, and the charisma to sell himself on the charts and then some. Industry Baby is such a flamethrower banger that calls back to the dynamics of hip-hop in the early 2000s. That kind of braggadocious, in-your-face type of confrontation, but Lil Nas X absolutely has all of the pizzazz needed to back that up, and Jack Harlow drops off a guest verse that I didn't expect to enjoy, but now replay just for that section sometimes when I listen through the song. You could say that this works on every single level, because it absolutely does. It's a slapper to the left, to the right, up, down, any way you spin it. The title track from Billie Eilish's sophomore album is everything I wanted. It has a slow rise that eventually just breaks out, and I know that some people feel like Billie Eilish can't really belt like she's not quite there yet. You have to allow the artist to actually grow, because these building blocks, it's gonna be very important down the line. To have her brother Phineas involved with this minimal production that starts off with kind of this ukulele and then it slowly adds in a little bit more of a guitar, Billy's voice gets a little bit raspier, and then finally we get to this moment where the demons just start flying about wildly as we see the collapse of a relationship getting put on blast. Maybe it's something that the entire world was never meant to see, but here we are at this point just drowning in the abyss of whatever she and her brother have built, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Two phones, but I only bring one in this bitch. One daughter, but they all my sons in this bitch. No hoes ain't shit getting done in this bitch. I'm scary, I got a gun in this bitch. Baby Keem, older cousin Kendrick Lamar, let's link right in the middle for an absolutely full throttle adventure on family ties, nearly topping my list in at number two. I'm so excited for what the future holds for Baby Keem because I truly do think that he has some very out there flows that feel unique, like maybe I haven't quite heard this brand before and that's what's going to make him a very distinctive MC, much like Kendrick has been able to do with multiple voices throughout his career. Kendrick's verse on this thing, man, holy shit. It's not that he totally steals Baby Keem's thunder, but the way that they're able to trade flows back and forth by the end of this track, it just never misses a beat, even with the beat switch. Oh god damn, you got me in love again. But god damn, all the way at number one, you got me in love again. It's Dua Lipa for what, three years in a row now? For tracks off of Future Nostalgia making my best hits list? Love Again got the music video and single push in 2021, which I didn't really expect, but I do think that it kind of lines up with the retro aesthetic. This is kind of a retro throwback way of promoting an album and extending the life naturally. The way they were able to flip this sample of My Woman, a song that was originally recorded in 1932, and to make it work so well for the opening, for the backbone of the entire song, and to have it pop off so hard by the time we get to the chorus, that is a stroke of genius, and nothing about Dua Lipa's future nostalgia and the success that it's had is lost on me. This is the exact direction that I was hoping she would sprint towards, and I really just can't even wait to see what she has up her sleeve next time. That's a wrap on my picks for the top 20 best hit songs of the year 2021, songs that charted for at least five weeks on the United States Billboard Hot 100. What did you think of my list? Do you have your own? Comment down below, let me know, and please hit that like button, subscribe for the love of music, and if you want to check out more of my year-end content, or maybe even my favorite hit songs of last year, then check out the links that are on screen now. I'll be back soon for more on ARTV.